All right, the courthouse clock is saying six o'clock, so we'll go ahead and call this November meeting of the Blunt County Board of Zoning Appeals to order. Roger, if you call the roll, please. Rob Walker. Here. Larry Chesky's not here. Bruce Demro. Here. Stan Hendricks. Here. Brian Key. Here. There's no discussion. There's a motion to approve last month's meeting minutes. Second. Let's see. Tonight we have one variance and two special exceptions. First variance is a request for rear setback on uh, 1908 Highland Road. The applicant's request for variance for the rear setback um, at 1908 Highland Road. The property is identified on tax map 68B, Group A, parcel 29.01, and is zoned suburbanizing. The required setback is 20 feet. The applicant is requesting room, a room addition on the back of the house to be used for a dining area. This room addition will project 12 feet into the setback, leaving eight feet to the back property line. This is a small lot and is on the septic system. I assume that this, that is the reason the house was pushed all the way to the back of the property. This lot is approximately 0.2 acres and the septic system consumes the entirety of the front yard. Is anyone here tonight in favor of this variance who would like to speak? I don't imagine either one of y'all are in any uh, opposition either, are you? <laughs> All right, we'll open up discussion from the board. There's a big house that this backs up to. Uh, <clears throat> looks like a big house. On the front? No, on the back. Evidently, this is sloping down. It is. So it, so they backed up to the back property line, uh, and just looking overhead down at it, it looks like it gets awful close compared to others around there. But the point is, the guy behind it, does anybody care? Does anybody care down in, in there? I, I no idea. I looked around the neighborhood and I, I found a few in the neighborhood that don't meet the rear setbacks. You know, some of them like 15 and 17 feet from the property lines. Of course, a lot, most of that subdivision is built out way before zoning. And, mm. and th these two houses are are just about identical. The two that are side by side and the, the one that's requesting the variance. And they're newer homes for that area. When I say newer, I think they're still pre-zoning. Yeah. But I think they held them all the way back so they could get have room to get, I would assume, a bedroom approval that that was. Yeah, I, I don't. I just because they're, they're they're tiny lots. They're tiny, I, but I just think moving it up to the back eight feet away from the line. You know, if the, their neighbor, of course, he's not here, so I don't guess there's nobody cares. Discussion. Madam Chair, I'll entertain a motion. I move we accept the or grant the variance. Is there a second? Second. Bruce Damro? Yes. Stan Hendrick? Yes. Brian King? Yes. Rob Walker? Yes. Motion passed. First special exception tonight is a request at 235 South Old Glory Road. The applicant is requesting a special exception to locate a Type 2 magazine in an unoccupied warehouse located on the property at 235 South Old Glory Road. The property is identified on tax map 56, parcel 45, and is zoned commercial. The property currently houses Vanquish Worldwide, which is a business that provides professional services and uh, facilities support, information technology, security, and transportation. Peak, 
Peak Technical Institute is requesting this special exception to store explosive type two magazines in a vacant building on Vanquish's property. Since the proposed use is not listed as a permitted use in the commercial zone, it is required to be reviewed as a special exception according to section 9.4B, specifically as any other commercial activity not listed as permitted use in section 9.4A. The request is to go into the existing structure that is labeled as warehouse on the included site plan. This structure does meet our setback requirements and is 220 feet from the county school property line and 427 feet from that school building. I have included a description of the top two magazine that was provided by the applicant. Is there anything that you would like to add to what Roger just told us? Um, well, the, we've been given... If, if you don't mind, could you come to the microphone, please? Sir? Good evening. Uh, I'm Eric Barton. I own both Vanquish Worldwide and uh, Peak Technical Institute. Peak is a college uh, located in in Maryville, uh, we do different types of training. One of the, one of the programs is unexploded ordnance. Uh, there's three schools in the country that do this type of training. Um, I started one, Reliant, which I sold in 2010. Uh, Front Range Training, which I own, uh, has been doing this training since 2009. The uh, it's in Colorado. I transferred that program to our college in 2013. What we want to do is start move our UXO program from Colorado. To, uh, to Blount County. And uh, there's about 60 students um, a year currently going through the course. As wards pick up, we've graduated in the 200s, but right now we anticipate about 60 uh, for next year. And so the students come through a one-month course, and what we do is have uh, small quantities of explosives that we uh, use for uh, demonstrations for the students. And so they, uh, when they graduate, they're Tech Ones, we're accredited through uh, Tennessee Higher Education and Colorado Higher Education, as well as uh, NAOC, which is a National Association of Ordnance Contractors. And so we've had our ATF, ATF license uh, in, in Colorado for uh, 13 years for the company, but for five years we've been conducting this course. So uh, it's, it's small levels, under 50, 50 pounds is allowed. We typically have about 45 pounds in the beginning of the year, and by this time of the year we're we're down to less than 10 pounds, so. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be some questions from the board, so we'll open up the board for some discussion. What is a type two magazine? Uh, it is a three, three by four foot uh, box, basically for storage. So like you would see a hazmat container, it's a, a small, small container that's uh, ATF approved for the storage of explosives. So we'll typically have a thousand foot of debt cord, and so then we'll have our small sheets. So you're just sheets. going to have one of these things in that whole deal? Um, I th we'll have two, probably one. One that's typically full, and then another one for. In the beginning, we'll have more. Uh, again, around 45 pounds is what we normally buy in the beginning of the year, and we use that for the for the course throughout the year. And by, so by this time, we have you know less than 10 pounds. So this this. Uh before us, is it is it to approve a Type Two magazine box full of ammunition, or is it just for that business there? No, it, it's just for that. It's just <coughs> storage. It's something they they contacted me because they needed a, a zoning certification for their ATF licenses. So, but it's basically just for two boxes of ammunition. Yes. Now, is this ammunition or explosives? Explosives. Okay. It's, it's, uh, it's three types, dead cord, dead sheets, and small shape charges. That's typically, typically stored in there. Um, in Colorado, it's a little different. You, you get your ATF license, they check you. We've been audited uh, every year, and we've, we've never had a finding um, in Colorado. We, we also have our mobile teams. We, we train SWAT teams, et cetera. We train the Maryville City uh, Police here with our mobile teams. Um, but we haven't stored explosives here. We, we've done that out in, in uh, Loveland, Colorado. And uh, I've negotiated to terminate my lease in the building in Colorado, and I want to I move this, that program here uh, to Blount County. So um, as we started to do the research, there's, this is the process to, um, to do that. 
If you had all 45 pounds of explosives in that box blow up, how big a hole in the ground would it make? Um, well, I'm not the expert to, to tell you how big of a hole. It wouldn't be very big. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's dead cord. Um, the building's fairly good size. It's on concrete. Um, it's standoff. It's, you know, so it ain't no big deal. 300 feet, 200 and some feet from, from our main building. So I know, I know people have got 45 pounds of ammunition. Yeah, it's not very much, but it's, uh, you know, again, it's just used for, it's used for our students to, we have, um, so in our course in Loveland, we have our second floor that is uh, a setup, kind of a minefield, a mock minefield, and we teach them to go through and how to find and detect mines, and then we also show them how, what explosives can do, and that's, that's kind of the, the reason for the live at explosives, so for where, training. Where days. do you detonate these explosives? Where is your training facility? <coughs> um, it's going to be right there? No, no, that's just storage. Okay. Then we then we'll move it to locations, and there's several approved ranges. We're trying to work with Blunt County with the, uh, the sheriff's office for their range out there, but uh, we haven't really moved forward at that at this time. We've talked to them, but we're not going to move forward until we get our license, because our course is scheduled for next March. So we wouldn't bring explosives here until April or May of next year when we move the course here. So if you got, how do you detonate them? Just bang or what? <laughs> there's fuses. There's time fuses. So we'll set a time fuse um, to, to a charge or to, uh, to the dead cord. Why, and, uh, excuse me, ignorance, this is interesting. Uh, should you just go out and detonate it? H how does that train people? Uh, well, well, so what we, we, we train what the explosives can do, also how to handle live explosives. There's a different kind of, uh, towards the end of the course, um, it's, it's different to handle live explosives than it is to handle non so it's, it's training so. them how to use explosives, basically. How, how to use and then how to render safe. But in mm -hmm. the end, they get a certification um, through the higher education as well as through NAOC to be a certified Tech 1, which is pretty much all the it's Tech 1, Tech 2, Tech 3. And so Tech 1 is a junior level EOD technician. Mm -hmm. And so police forces, um, contracting companies, you know, all, Tech 1s are a requirement. Uh, that certification is a requirement to get the job. So, um, do, do you uh, work in conjunction any with University of Tennessee with their certification program on? Uh, with Reliant, UVs? yeah, I did. Yeah, Pel and they they trained at Pellissippi as well, and yeah. so um, I founded that company in 2006 and sold it in 2010. You've got a good location there. It looks like the only thing that concerns me is the proximity of the school. What's the possibility of this uh, explosive detonating and shrapnel going towards the school? I mean, the, well, and these these explosives are not. I mean, you could we can throw them at each. Other. I mean, they're not going to explode unless you put a fuse to them. So they're not fragile to handle. Um, and so they're in a, in a magazine. We take them from the, the magazine, put them into another mobile magazine in our approved container, and we transport to the range with our safety officers. So only our licensed people that have ATF licenses handle the um, the explosives. But uh, also, our building is in between the school building, so there's standoff there, and uh, you know none of us want to have that occur. But tr truly, if this type of act, if, if the dead core exploded in that building, um, it hurt the building. But it's, it's not, it's not that powerful of an explosive to, so to go over there. So it would never be live in the building. It would never be live. It's just a storage. We we don't we don't set a fuse to it, or even fuses are not in the same area where you know there's ATF regulations to follow. Our license handlers move it from one magazine to the mobile magazine into the approved container to move it to the range. The range officer removes it, sets it, then we have the fuses come. So there's, there's very strict regulation, obviously, in the movement of explosives. How do you, how do you fuse it? Uh, well, it depends. I mean, if it, you put a time fuse to it, so you have the small fuse and you and insert just, it to the cord. Like the dynamite, light a match to it or what? No, no, it's, it's an electrical charge, electrical impulse. Make sure you cut the right wire. You put the fuse in, you can run the line, and, or you can do it, do it a wireless, but mainly we're doing wire. So we run the wire to, to the shelter. Everyone has a chance to view it, and we set the explosive. And we, we demo trees, we demo different uh, uh, small rocks, and just kind of show them what the explosives can do. We did that one time with black powder. <laughs> put it in a quart jar and put it under a tree stump. A little fuse, <laughs> run. <laughs> well, we, we it didn't go <laughs> off. We won't do that, I promise. Why them 80s together? Yeah, it it didn't go off. 
you sit around and it didn't go off. I'm going back down and check. No, you just hang on. Here about 20 minutes later, ding. <laughs> If you've been to our building, we have um, cameras 360 degrees around. Uh, not, we have, we're there 24-7. We have our night dispatch. We have fences that shut at 7 p.m. and open at 7 a.m. Uh, and then we have uh, camera systems on the building itself as well as locks. Uh, so there's the gate, the guard, the camera, the door to the, to the main building, and then the, the magazine itself has a lock. So we got four, um, four rooms yeah. of security.